Hey everybody, and welcome back to the next part in my <clears throat> guitar solo analysis uh, video series. I haven't done one of these in a while. I've been busy doing a lot of Helix uh, and HX Stomp content. So I want to get back to, to, to doing these. And I was going through the guitar solo covers I've done in the recent past. And one of my favorites uh, was always Nuno Betancourt's amazing, incredible solo on uh, the extreme song, Play With Me which I first heard, as most of us probably did, back uh, in, was it the first Bill and Ted's movie, I think, when they were running through the mall wreaking havoc with all the uh, historical figures. Um, so yeah, I remember just, just being a totally head-turning solo, mind-blowing stuff, and I did a cover of it a while back. So I'm gonna link that, um, my performance video of it. Uh, I'm not gonna perform it here, I'll just take you through my analysis of it, but. Um, what a fun solo. Uh, challenging, very, very quick, um, and a lot of tricky lines in there, as, uh, as Nuno's known for. So, so let's dive right in and take a look at the solo. So basically, the solo is going to start here at a bar 123. I found a tab online that was actually pretty good. I made some corrections to some of the phrasing and stuff to uh, kind of suit what I, I was thinking was going on more, and I added the chords in. Uh, so we can get some tonality uh, uh, ideas, how Nuno was thinking over the, the particular chords he was playing over top of. So the, the solo starts with this really ridiculously fast, uh, almost what you'd call tremolo picked idea, um, alternating individual notes, as you can see here, fifth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret, 10th fret, you know, so on and so forth, with, with three open high E strings in between it. So a lot of people, basically it would, it would be kind of along these lines. You know, that type of a thing. And a lot of people have a hard time getting that really solid. And here's what I do when I'm looking at something like that. What I'm seeing here is basically the important notes, so the five, the seven, the eight, the 10, right? The A, the B, the C, the D up on our high E string. And I just ignore these opens at first. I know I'm gonna just be able to get those in there as long as I can target my, my notes that I need on specific beats. And if you notice, all of our fretted notes, sorry about that, are going to be on beat one, and of beat one, two, and then and of beat two. Right, this, is, this has been notated in two, four time. That's why it's like this. So, um, so basically, if we can think of it as like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Right? If we can just know where those lie, then it's gonna be easy to kind of put our three individual open strings in between, right? So one way we can practice that is just thinking of the targets as one and two and three and four and to get those notes on. So one and two and three and four. And then we can throw in our open strings with our tremolo picking. So you can even practice getting the timing down without moving around at first by just sticking on, say, the fifth fret, the A on the first string, right? And go. One and two and three and four. One, two and three. And, you'll, and just trying to nail that target down so that we're always landing on that fifth fret on the one and the and, the two and the and, right? And then we can maybe add another note in. You know, until we feel comfortable, add a third note in. And of course, I'm muting it too. It sounded like Nuno was muting that, right? Unmuted, it's kind of. It's fine, but it, it's. it's uh, not the sound that he gets that really aggressive muted sound. And then just work your way up, you know. Uh, you know, something like that until you get through all of them. So basically memorize the five, seven, eight, 10, eight, seven, five, four, five, seven, eight, seven, five, four, five, seven, eight, 10, eight, seven, 10, eight, seven, five. Right? Um, so basically, yeah, if you memorize those notes and, and what's going on there, uh, it's going to be easy once you just get that tremolo picking going to hit your targets. Hopefully that helps you guys sort of see what's going on there. So what's happening as far as the tonality goes, the notes he's choosing are actually seem to be from the A harmonic minor scale. And the chords underneath are just doing these shots, kind of, you know, E to, actually, yeah, he goes below on the E. So E to A, right? So. So he's moving notes from the A harmonic minor scale around. That's what makes it harmonic minor right there. Oh, 
okay? So it's A harmonic minor, and like I said, just working on those targets falling, getting those notes to fall on the appropriate beats. Right, so something like that. He then moves into a very simple little da 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 ba ba, right? Little dive bomb with the bar there. And we can see that notated right in here. I didn't really check the transcription on this because it's such a simple little lick. See, they have a slide down to the third fret. I would just ignore that. It's more like a, you know, I would do a dive. Okay, so no big deal there. Now, where it gets interesting is here. Here's the tonality we are going to be dealing with as far as the chords go. So he basically plays this progression over the rest of the solo. He goes from an E5 for two, two bars of 2-4 to an A5 for one bar. A5 with the C sharp and the bass, okay? So that's fourth, fourth fret, and fourth fret on the fifth string, and uh, pinky up here on the that's a C sharp, and that's the A up there. So it's then he just slides up to a D5, D sharp five, B5 for one beat each. So it sounds basically like this: the cycle, okay? before repeating it all over again here at measure 139. So what goes on over top of that? Well, it's kind of interesting. He plays this line here. They're very much based around arpeggio figures, okay? Uh, so if we look at these from an intervallic standpoint, thinking of the intervals that he's playing, if you look at this first pattern that he plays over the E5 chord, Rhythm's gonna be very important here. He's doing groups of six, or you can think of them as groups of three even, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Notice I'm putting an accent on one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. I don't know if Nuno's picking the whole thing. Not sure, it's really tough to pick that whole thing accurately. I think it's more of a combination of picks and hammer-ons and pull-offs and really getting aggressive on those accented notes. Or like that sort of thing. So what are the notes he's playing? Well, he's playing, if we look at the interval, he's playing an E and he's playing a G sharp in there. So we know that that right there is kind of creating an E major type tonality, right? Um, but the other notes he has in there, so he's got E major, but but he's got a flat seventh interval, which is creating kind of a dominant seventh type of a sound. But he's also got an F, right? So that's like a flat nine sound. So. So while he has the, the E tonality going, he's got the first and the third, he's got a flat seventh in there. But he's also got this flat two, or we can think of it as a flat nine. So it's like a dominant seventh flat nine tonality or an arpeggio over top of this. Very interesting sound. He does two bars of that. Now the thing about this is he's kind of using a very recurring style of pattern here with these sixes, right? So once we get one of these arpeggios down, especially in the next section where he gets into some string skipping, they get easier. We just gotta memorize where our finger uh, positions are for each arpeggio, but the technique as far as the hammer-ons and pull-offs and our right hand technique is gonna stay very much the same, okay? So this first again is uh, this, this E7 flat nine tonality. Okay, he then switches to an A chord. Well, guess what he does? Or an A5 chord. He just does an A major arpeggio. The next pattern is this. Where that's really coming from is this more long sweep pattern, right? But he's breaking it down different. He gets up to this part. Instead of going to the, uh, the E on the fifth fret on the second string, he just puts it up here on the third string. This is where these ones get a little tricky because there's some string skipping involved, right?
<laughs> we can really hear how that works nicely over that. And that's this part here at 133. So I would just say take it really slow, but pay a lot of attention to the rhythmic values, right? One, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So from the first E1, Right? He only does that pattern once, then he moves up to this A5 with a C sharp in the bass. And the bass guitar is actually playing C sharp as well. What's neat about this is he plays an A7th arpeggio above it, totally changing the tonality again. So same sort of pattern we just did. He just moves it up to the 12th fret with my pinky here. He does the same pattern but just slightly squashed in for, for this A7th tonality. You could also do it with your third finger if you find it easier. Either one is fine. But I'm keeping the same technique down that I had, right? Right, so now he switches to a D5 chord. Now, the problem with this is he doesn't really do a D arpeggio over top of it, he does a B minor arpeggio over top of it. It's this. Which kind of gives a sound of like a D sixth, D major sixth, if you if you take it over that tonality, right? Um, so that's fine, uh, but B minor-ish tonality as far as the notes we're playing in the arpeggio. So slowly so far. This is neat, he takes a very similar pattern over a D sharp five for a beat, and then a B five for a beat, and he turns it into a B major arpeggio. So really playing around the tonality, it's kind of kind of interesting, you know? He's in E here to an A to an A five over C sharp, D, D sharp five, B five, back to E. So that, that pattern is. So really we have this, uh, uh, e dominant seventh uh, with a flat nine to A major arpeggio to A seventh arpeggio to a B minor to a B major. Now those patterns are going to be important because we're going to see how he utilizes them in a different manner coming up really soon. So hopefully that helps you guys. Like I said, the way I'm, you know, the funny thing is, is I didn't really notate this, but the way I'm doing this, I think. I'm going uh, hammer-ons there. Pick, pick, pick. Uh, pull off there. And then another pull here, if you wanted to kind of follow what I'm doing. So. And then for all of them, same thing. Uh, you know, same sort of idea. I find technically that gets the aggression that Nuno has with the pick hitting sometimes, but it helps us to get the speed too. I don't know if that's what he's doing or if he's picking the whole thing. Nuno's a, a total monster player and really incredible, you know, so. So once we go back through those, uh, we're done with those arpeggios, he just does this kind of descending, squealed, pinch harmonic bend thing. All right, we just gotta dig in with the side of our pick, find out the... Almost like a chromatic thing at one point, right? So the ninth fret bend. Right, so that's pretty straight ahead. That's all gonna be over the E chord. Now he goes back to the same thing we just talked about arpeggio-wise. If you look at the patterns now, he plays these in 32nd notes, but this pattern here is that same E seventh with a flat nine arpeggio. This is the same A major, this is the same A seventh, this is the same B minor, this is the same B major. But what he does for the first one, two, three, four and a half bars is he now goes really crazy as 30 second notes. But the important thing here is this rest. So it's like, the pattern is this. Okay, so that's what he's doing. Totally different feel than the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And he starts them on different notes. Instead of starting, with the pull off, he starts with a hammer on. And again, the way I would play this, and again, I'm not sure if it's what Nuno's doing exactly, but I would do like hammer on, pull off there, probably, uh, let me see here. 
one. Yeah, see, I wouldn't actually pull that one off. That would just be a hammer again. Hammer, I believe, would be more like that type of thing. Yeah, and just keep those, that type of a pattern going through the whole thing. Um, so then, yeah, so he jumps that, but the important thing is to keep that 16th note rest at the beginning to really nail this down. So it's like one and two and three and four, or actually one and two and one. Now if you notice what I did there, he changes it halfway through from the 30 second notes back to the groups of three, which is a little bit tricky, but you really have to make sure that you, you let beat one hit and then jump in one 16th note later on your thing. So it's one. One, 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 one. Okay, so the, that part here over the D5, right here at measure 143, he does one little quick 30 second note fling. And goes back into the one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So. Right? But again, the nice thing is, is once you have this, these first arpeggio patterns we did back here in measure 131, 132, and all the way up to 136, this is gonna be a lot easier. We just gotta get our head around the rhythmic values and that little rest at the beginning that's gonna help us out, okay? Cool, okay, so then he ends with, uh, you know, four bars of two, four on E5, and he just does this monstrously long E major arpeggio, starting here. That's the first bar. And again, this is based around these typical sweep pattern. You know, those types of things. So he goes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Very important to get that timing down. Go slow with it. Accent each first note of each group of three or, or six, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think I end up accenting kind of more on the threes. One, two, three, one, two, three. Right? So that's. Similar to some of the patterns we've done previously, right? Then he slides it all the way up to 16th fret. And I would go over there with my first finger. Oops, that's wrong. Big stretch there. Fun stuff, okay? So big, giant, long E major arpeggio, but take it in sections, you know? Fun stuff. Is that helpful? Hopefully. Um, <laughs> kind of an analysis of what he was doing, not, not like I do with these. I don't like to necessarily just go note for note through and say, oh, you know, put your finger here, put your finger here, put your finger here. That doesn't, you know, you can do that with the tabs, but I like to sort of see what's going on. So really cool use of arpeggios. I think this was a solo Nuno composed in advance. I highly, highly doubt that this was, uh, that this was just improvised. You know, that would be pretty amazing if it was, but I think this was a well thought out kind of, um, uh, composed solo in advance that he performed. I think it even sounds like he doubles it actually, to be honest with you. So yeah, and that's what I did in my performance video. I played it once and I doubled it to get that, that sound. So go check out the performance video of it. I'll have that link down below um, in the, uh, in the uh, description. And uh, hopefully that guy answered some of your questions and gave you a few tips to, to maybe get you playing this. Just go slow with this. It's a real workout. It's crazy stuff. Um, I haven't practiced in a while. Uh, since I worked on it for uh, for the actual performance video a number of months ago. So uh, it, it's tricky, it's tricky stuff, but fun and great for the chops, great for the hands and great for some new and interesting arpeggio patterns. And it's very important to see how those work over top of the chords so we can see why Nuno did what he did. So anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed that. Please share the video, like it if, uh, if you don't mind and subscribe to my channel if uh, you haven't already and I'll be back more uh, soon uh, with some more content, hopefully good stuff. All right. Ciao for now, guys. Thanks again for tuning in.